there has been a lot of talk about a steepening yield curve and how this specific metric is signaling that a recession is about to come. And investors are waiting for crucial inflation data to be released on August 14th, which in my opinion will determine the trajectory of the markets moving forward. And inflation data can cause even more steepening of the curve, which is a major concern. Now, I'm specifically referring to the 10-year minus two-year yield spread and the 10-year minus three-month yield spread. These two charts have accurately predicted recessions since World War II, but in my opinion, one is more reliable than the other. So what is the yield curve and what is the yield spread? Why is it steepening? And why is it regarded as one of the most reliable predictors of a recession? But more importantly, how can investors use this information to protect their portfolio against a recession? Understanding this relationship can help you decide on what type of assets can serve as a reliable hedge, all depending on your own personal risk appetite. And this is where things get really interesting. If you guys are enjoying this content and find it helpful, please do me a little favor and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out my channel and I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. Let's move on. To begin, the yield curve is a graphical representation of the interest rates of treasury bonds relative to their maturity dates. Now, I'm going to break this down as simply as possible so that investors can thoroughly understand the implications of a steepening yield spread and how it relates to inflation data. And there's a few fundamentals that you have to keep in mind. Treasury bonds are a form of debt securities, and when you purchase a bond, you are lending money to the U.S. government. Now, these bonds have what's called a coupon rate, which is essentially the amount of interest income you will receive in return for lending the money. The most important thing to remember here is that these bonds have different maturity dates. And the maturity date is referring to the date when the borrower, in this case the US government, has to repay the full value of the bond, also referred to as the face value. And maturity dates are categorized as short-term, medium-term, and long-term. Short-term is typically less than three years, medium-term is between three to 10 years, and long-term is 10 plus years. Now, in a normal and healthy economic environment, the longer the maturity date, the more interest income you will receive because you are lending your money for a longer period of time, which has more risk. So in order to compensate for the added risk, you get a higher interest rate. And the only reason it is riskier is because bonds are subject to one very specific type of risk and that is interest rate risk. Changes in interest rates heavily affect the value of the bonds. Two of the most important things to remember is that bond values have an inverse relation with interest rates, and the longer the maturity date of the bond, the more sensitive it is to interest rates. Let's take a look at three ETFs, TLT, IEF, and SHY. These ETFs represent long-term, medium-term, and short-term bond maturity dates. In 2022, we saw interest rates rise over the course of a year to a peak of 5.5%, which is what they are currently at right now. And if we look at the performance of these ETFs side by side, since the start of 2022 till now, you can see that SHY, which holds a basket of bonds with the shortest maturity dates of one to three years, has seen almost no price depreciation. At its worst, it had lost 4%. IEF, which holds a basket of seven to 10 year bonds, had a lot more price depreciation, and at its worst, it was down around 18%. And TLT, which holds 20 plus year bonds, suffered the most at a peak loss of around 40%. So you can see that as the maturity dates of these bonds increase, the level of volatility increases as well. Moving on, if you plot the relation between interest rates and the different maturity dates of bonds on a graph, in a normal, healthy economic environment, you get a positive slope that looks something like this. This graph right here represents the yield curve at the beginning of 2021. But right now we have a yield curve that looks like this, where interest rates on shorter term treasury bonds are much higher than interest rates on longer term bonds. And this is referred to as an inverted yield curve. And the only reason this has happened is because the Federal Reserve hiked up interest rates, which directly affects short term loans. Now, of course, this does increase the interest rates on longer duration bonds as well, but drastic rate hikes tend to result in an inverted yield curve. Now, let's take a quick break to talk about today's video sponsor, SEO Writing. This innovative tool allows you to create well-researched SEO optimized content, which is essential for business owners of all type who want to increase visibility and traffic to their website and maintain a competitive advantage. Using this platform is extremely easy. You simply log into your SEO writing dashboard, enter your preferred topic and your title, then scroll down to further customize your articles with options like 
tone of voice, where you get to choose whether you want your article to come out witty or professional. You can also customize the Media Hub. This feature allows you to integrate visual elements that complement your article, making your content more engaging and visually pleasing. Now, you can run your article after only inputting your initial keywords and title, or you can utilize all of the customizing features in order to get an article that is more specific to your needs. But once you run the article, the AI does the rest. It pulls in relevant data, structures your blog post, and even optimizes it for search engines. This means higher visibility, more traffic, and more business opportunities. As a business owner, focusing on core operations is crucial, and having a tool like SEO writing to handle the content creation for you frees up your time while ensuring that your blog posts are professional, engaging, and optimized for success. So if you're looking to streamline your content strategy and boost your online presence, check out this platform. I have attached a link in the description down below. It is an absolute game changer for busy professionals. You can use my code VIK25 to get 25% off your membership. Now back to the video. So now that you understand what the yield curve is, what is the yield spread? Simply put, it is a chart that plots the difference between the interest rates of 10-year treasury bonds and two-year treasury bonds, and 10-year treasury bonds and three-month treasury bonds. So if we look at this chart, we see interest rates of 10-year bonds, which right now sit at 3.94%, and interest rates of two-year bonds, which sit at 4.05%. If we subtract 4.05 from 3.94, you get negative 0.11. And if we look at the 10 year minus two year yield spread chart, the value sits at negative 0.11. Keep in mind that this black line is zero, so anything below the black line is a negative difference, or in other words, an inverted yield curve, and anything above it is a positive yield curve. Now, the 10 year minus three month yield spread chart sits at negative 1.43. And right now, if you subtract the three month yield, which is at 5.33, from the 10 year yield, you'll get negative 1.43. It's very simple. So now that you understand this, why is the yield spread steepening and how has it been able to predict a recession? Well, to begin, notice how only one of the charts is showing a steepening curve while the other hasn't really moved much. This is very important. Right now, concerns are growing over the steepening of the 10 year minus two year chart. Since June of 2024, the chart pattern has gained a lot of momentum and is almost trending to the zero line. And the only way the yield spread steepens is if the two year yields are dropping at a faster rate than the 10 year yields. Now, if we look back at our yield curve chart, you see that interest rates on 10-year bonds are almost the same as two-year bonds. And if we go back to June of 2024, there was a much larger difference, but two-year yields dropped a lot more in the past few months. So why is this happening? Well, there are two reasons, and this is where I want you guys to pay very close attention. For one, it is because of disinflation. As I've said before, the Federal Reserve increases interest rates in order to tackle inflation and they've kept it high for almost two years because inflation has been rather persistent. But recently, we've been seeing a strong downward trend in headline inflation numbers, which prompts the Federal Reserve to start considering cutting interest rates. As a result, investors start pricing in their expectations of interest rates. And I want to put an emphasis on the word expectation. One thing you have to keep in mind is that the 10-year yield is a reflection of the market's expectation of interest rates within the next 10 years and two-year yields reflect interest rate expectations within the next two years. The two-year is a lot more sensitive to interest rate expectations than the 10-year. Since the end of May, two-year yields have plummeted 20%, but 10-year yields have plummeted 15%. So the two-year yield is falling much quicker than the 10-year yield. And even though we haven't seen any rate cuts yet, the yields on these treasury bonds are fluctuating. So if we get inflation data that is continuing on a disinflationary trend, then the yields on two-year and 10-year treasuries will drop even further but the two year will drop even more. Therefore, the spread between them is going to become even less. Now, the second reason is weakening economic trends. Interest rate cuts are also used to stimulate the economy in order to avoid heavy contraction. And given that we've seen unexpected rise in unemployment, poor manufacturing health, 
Along with the decline in consumer spending and poor earnings outlook for major companies, this prompts the Federal Reserve to consider more interest rate cuts in order to avoid further damage to the economy, potentially giving rise to emergency rate cuts. So right now, we are seeing that Treasury yields are factoring in both disinflation and economic contraction, which is why the spread is steepening at such a rapid pace. If we look back at this chart, an inverted yield spread followed by a steepening yield spread has occurred every single time before a recession. But notice how the yield on three-month treasuries has stayed relatively the same. And this all ties back to the accuracy of the yield spread. As I've said before, two-year yields reflect the market's expectation of interest rates within the next two years. But three-month yields are a direct reflection of short-term interest rates. So we won't see three-month yields change unless the Federal Reserve actually implements its first rate cut. So the question is, when will this yield spread start steepening? And the answer is by September, which is when the Federal Reserve is scheduled to implement its first rate cut. You see, the only reason the 10-year minus three-month yield spread is more accurate is because it reflects real-time changes in interest rates, whereas the 10-year minus two-year yield spread foreshadows what's about to come. So how can this information be used to help investors find effective ways to hedge their portfolios in a potential recession? Well, the number one way, in my opinion, is to find assets that have a negative correlation with stocks. And that means that when stocks fall, these assets rise and vice versa. And as we discussed, bond prices have an inverse relation with interest rates. So when interest rates are finally cut, the value of bonds will increase. And the longer the duration of these bonds, the more drastic the change. The three ETFs we mentioned earlier can provide a hedge for investors with varying levels of volatility. In my opinion, the two better options are IEF and TLT, because if we see a heavy sell-off in the markets, then the value of these ETFs will increase enough to help dampen the effects. But TLT will have the largest effect. Now, of course, we don't know how rapid the Federal Reserve will be cutting interest rates, which gives us a bit of uncertainty as to how bond prices will react. So that is why for investors who still want to use bonds as a hedge, IEF will provide a more risk-averse avenue. It suffers much less volatility. Now, of course, there are other avenues that investors can use as a hedge in a potential recession, and I'll be going over that in my next video. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.